uh, our study did not pass. Now, one of the reasons study didn't pass is the size of area versus, step, uh, versus services that we were proposing to deliver. So, what we had to do next was to make some hard decisions. This is the new proposal, new boundary map for the city of Stonecrest. It does not encompass the entire city of Latonia because they felt that you were swallowing us. You were making it unfair. We cannot grow on that particular end of it. So what we decided was, after meeting with them several times, is that since the industrial park here wanted to be part of the city of Stonecrest, something new, and they still wanted to grow, we left the west open and shrunk it to 50,000 residents and changed services to Parks and Rec, Zoning, and Code Enforcement. Why? Why would we focus on those three services? One is that I detest trash. And this is stopping us from economic development in our area, whether people believe it or not. You know, if people roll by and they look at what is happening here, why can why we can't why can't we control this in this area? So that was one of the very things that we focused on, you know, in this particular arena. Also, we shrunk it down to fifty thousand instead of eighty-two thousand. Conducted another study, raised money, gathered another team. This time, the study passes. Not only did the study pass. The study passes with 20% or so revenue left over for the city. So what are those three services that we propose? Parks and Rec, Zoning, Code Enforcement. That's the start. Also, in our charter, is that we can expand those services once we get on our feet. Here's the, here's the thing that people talk about. Well, we're going to have double taxation. No, you will not. You have 100% pot. 95% of that pot continues to be with the Cab County. 5% goes to the proposed city. So you're not overlapping or doubling up on your tax services. Last thing, and I'll be brief. So what has happened here over the past three years, particularly this year? Fact, number one, three years and two studies. So we'll know what the, the particular impact is. <clears throat> number two, the study committee over the summer, the, over the summer, House and Senate over the summer. They had an impact study by Dr. Alfred Mead. Dr. Alfred Mead, Georgia Tech, I by the Cab County Coast. One of the things people always say is you're gonna hurt the county. Stonecrest is gonna hurt the county. But what Dr. Mead found is that the creation of the city of Stonecrest will actually save the Cab County money. You can look for that study on their site and it will show you there's a positive impact for the Cab County if the city of Stonecrest is created. Number three, the CBI study shows that we would collect 80% of our revenue from franchise fees. See, these are things that a county cannot collect, that a city can collect. So instead of pushing the burden heavily with regards to just your property taxes, only about 20% of the revenue comes to your property tax, or come from your property tax. The other 80% is from franchise fees that we can collect that the county cannot. Number four, not a second layer of government an improved partnership with DeKalb County. One of the things that had great disdain over a long period of time is that, quite frankly, uh, other places, if you will, wanted to fight with DeKalb County. We have no fight with DeKalb County. We believe that we can do some services better than they can, and we also believe that they can do some really good services that we're not even trying to take on. DeKalb County is a strong entity, and we can make it stronger. It's just that we have to have a different brand now to be able to do this. Last but not least, if you didn't know, Stonecrest is one of the three regional centers in this area. The other one was Perimeter, and the second one was Norfolk. Third one is Stonecrest. In closing, folks, this is what this is. For us to win, for us to be a better area, we have to change brands, add to what we're doing, Keep our tax base the same and give another competent business focus for this area. And we can do that. If Tucker can do it, if Vista Hills can do it, if Sandy Springs can do it, and those are the areas that uh, are now coming up across the Vista Hills, they lost their measure. But here's your opportunity to have your say. Do your homework, find out these answers for yourself, but I'm giving you a bullet point of the work that we've done over several years.
with um, the desire to have their own self-determination, we are elected by the people. And so we do what the will of the people is, and that was to have a say in whether or not this should be a proposed city. As you notice on the north side, there are many proposed cities that um, have actually come to fruition over the last 10 years in DeKalb County. And so we felt like the people on the south side need to have the same uh, opportunity to be able to voice their opinions whether or not they wanted to have a city. And so now we're going to open the discussion of whether or not you want to have this proposed city and give us input. Um, as we proceed in this process, because we have started the ball rolling, and we are going to have some hearings this year, over the next couple of weeks, on this. And so we intend to, our goal is to have it on the ballot um, this year. So I need you all to give us some, some honest input. Now, these are the ground rules, though. These are just the ground rules. You can have any opinion you like, and we will respect that opinion. We just need everybody to be respectful, OK? So we just agree that you will be respectful even if you do or do not, wherever you stand, you please be respectful of each other. And so I'm going to allow everyone to stand up now. We want to know if you're included in this city, what's the next steps, uh, whether you want it or you don't, this is the time to let us know. Please do not get, get up and give a five minute speech. Please try to limit your comments or your questions to a minute. Either ask a question or if you have to give us, you know, um, input, let's try to keep it succinct and try to to the measures at hand. Can we do that? Can we agree that that's what we're going to do? Yes. Thank you. I know you all can do it because we are the best county, we're the best, the south side is the best side, and that's why we're trying to do what's best for ourselves. Okay? All right. Anyone have any? Yes, sir, in the back. Okay. And tell us your name and tell us where you live. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ed Williams. <clears throat> I live here in South County. There are four main reasons why I'm against city here in South Dakota. One, the study number two that was listed on the list that Dr. Meeks of Georgia Tech supposedly performed, there is no written uh, study saying that, that there's a negative or positive impact in Stone Crest City. It's not, not true. Second of all, everything that's in Stone Crest was created without being in the city. So if you were looking for economic development, you do not need a city for economic development. Stone Crest Mall and everything that's in this area was created without being in a city. The reason why you want a city is for certain people to get put in positions to get their hands in your pocket on the property tax. But everything, 90% of what is in South Dakota was created without being in the city, including the city of North Dakota. Now, all the malls that are created here in DeKalb County were created without being in the city. So you don't need a city to be in the, uh, in, to have economic development. The last point I want to make is that the three services that uh, Jason Leary mentioned, parks and recreation, zoning, code enforcement, okay, those are nice services. Those, those are the least expensive services. What you really want to know is that the least services and public safety services are the most expensive services in the city, but they're not going to provide that. They're going to leave that to Cal County. But what will happen is if the Stonecrest and Greenhaven are created, that's 40% of the county's population. It will wreak havoc on the Cal County as a county service, and then if all the other services will be, have to be provided at city level. That would change the whole dynamics of the police department and the public safety department in North Cal. You're not telling me that. He didn't even mention that in his presentation. What impact it would have on South Cal. This is why I'm not necessarily against city work, but you need to know what the impacts are if you go for this city. And that's not being presented to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your um, input. Yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening. My name is Billy Daniels, and I, I just would like to ask a question. What are the franchise fees? I've heard this in a couple of different meetings that the city can collect franchise fees, but no, I've not heard what those fees are. They get a franchise fee from the cable and um, insurance. So basically, there is, if you look at your Georgia Power bill, there's a lot of items on there that says either city or franchise fee. But those uh, residents that live within the boundaries of a city, 
the um, like a Georgia Power would annually send a check to the city, and that is quote unquote a, a franchise fee. So it's just another revenue stream. It's still technically uh, residents are paying it. It's just not a tax. It's just a fee that you would pay on your your bill. Like I said, you pay for your insurance. Uh, I, I think uh, your gas, uh, your utility. So it's basically a fee, and they call it franchise. Franchise fees is for, no, yeah, French, oh, Ray Christie, um, the cap dams. Franchise fees are generally um, for the use of the right of way on in, within a city boundary. It also extends to banking. Um, so there's a couple different places that a city can collect franchise fees that a county cannot. So um, even though we pay them constantly, they just go as uncollected revenue unless we are incorporated as a city. And then at that point, it's distributed to the city. Did they answer your question? Yes, they did. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Bernard Knight. I, I live in North Central Cab. I work down here in the Stonecrest area and I'm a member of the Stonecrest City Alliance. Uh, with, res with respect to uh, what Mr. Williams said, actually, uh, Mr. Jason Larry and I personally attended the presentation that Dr. Alfred Deans made to the Cab County Operational Task Force where he announced the results of his study. And yes, there is a study in writing of Stonecrest, which finds that Stonecrest, the result of creating Stonecrest would be a net revenue positive for the city. It's there, it's provided to anybody who's interested. Uh, we welcome Mr. Williams in input as always, even though he will not be a resident of Stonecrest. Thank you.
My name is Barbara Lee with the Hunters Communities and I am assigned to this city. Uh, however, I do have some reservations about it. Uh, I am agree with, agree with Mr. Nelson there. I want, if I'm going to be put in a new city, I want to know that there will be some things better than what I'm getting now because I am not dissatisfied right now. I was not asked if I want to be in that city. I'm looking at Dunwoody, who is trying to get their own city school. I would like to know some concrete benefits that I, as a resident and taxpayer in my community, that we will get from being in the new Stonecrest City, not just to say I want to be in the city. I get the local news from Brookhaven and Sandy Springs and all of those Sandy Springs homeowners are asked to pay for sidewalks in front of their own homes. Well, I do know is that the city has the uh, uh, capability of levying more taxes on us. And if I remember correctly, one of the meetings that I attended, that the projected revenue income was somewhere around $9 million. And to me, that's nothing. That's nothing. That's salaries. That is not anything that will boost our quality of living. That's my concern. So that's a very good valid concern that you have. And so I think that's a concern probably of a lot of people in this room. And then, so how we look at it as legislators, it was brought to us uh, by the concerned citizens who live in this area. So when they were creating the city of Stonecrest, they just you know, put people in. And this is why we're having input. So you all can tell us what it is that you feel and we want the voters to be able to vote and decide what you think is best for you. Because none of us can tell you it would be better to be in the city of Stonecrest, but we also can't say that it won't be better. What we are saying is that we need to decide among ourselves what we want for ourselves on this side of the county. That's the only thing that I can say on this one. However, if the people in the city of Stonecrest who put together this boundary, maybe you can tell them how you came up with the boundaries for creating this city and why some people feel like they were not um, or they were not asked their opinions of you forming this city. Um, you put together a lot of people. So that might be it. Thank you, Virginia. Um, we did as many neighborhood and open library presentations that we could physically do. Um, matter of fact, hundreds was one of them. I did that one myself personally. And to answer this gentleman question and to answer uh, your question, ma'am. You know, why would it be different? Why would we make this different? What's the difference between staying the way we are versus creating a city to make something different? Let me give you three quick reasons. Residential input, commercial viability, and industrial park. Two of those three entities right now are suffering. And let me tell you, our road to salvation for this area is economic development. So how do you develop what you have into being something positive? One, our industrial park has been ignored for, for years. Do you know companies drive right past us to go to Rockdale and Newton County to build things out there? They drive right past us, like we're not even here. Seven, it's our responsibility to help take control of what's happening here commercially at the Stonecrest Mall, the Stonecrest area, and being able to draw business and restaurants and other businesses here to be able to do that. As much as I like the Cab County, as much as I love the people that are in office, they are not doing it. They're not doing it now. They're not gonna do it next year. They're not gonna do it 20 years from now. We're gonna have to take control of this ourselves and be able to take advantage of being able to draw business, draw economic development, and make quality what we have today. So, to specifically both of you here, because you asked very good questions, why do this? Why be different than, than, than some of the other places that we have? Because you have an opportunity to, to build a team, to build a legislation, to build committees on your own right here with your same tax dollars, with your same tax dollars. And then you as the people, you as the citizens decide if you want a tax raise or not. Because as D. Dolphin Hangler representative said, you get to decide what you pay for your different quality of life. So at this point, you take the same tax dollars 
the same money you're paying, and you do something with it. Because I'm telling you, the way we sit today, in the 30 years that my wife and I have paid taxes and lived in the cab now, it's not going to take me another 25 years to figure out it's not going to change. You have to change it. And we have an opportunity to change it now. So to sit back and to decide whether or not and do nothing, nothing is not an option. Nothing is not an option. My name is Pat Smith. I am with Hunters Communities as well. And I like to see the revenue streams that you're talking about because the largest portion of the revenue for the city of any city is your property tax. And if you have a lot of commercial or have a, not a lot of residential property, you have to look at that in your revenue stream. Is the digest composed of all residential or commercial? How much of that is commercial? Because if you have a lot of residential property, as foreclosures come in, your revenue and your digest is going to decrease. So the money that you're anticipating receiving now, as you get foreclosures in, in, into your digest, you will not be receiving that money. So unless you have a lot of commercial property, that would be the only way the digest is going to stay pretty stable. And I would like to just know what the revenue streams are going to be for the city of Stonecrest besides re real estate and uh, what else, uh, uh, franchise fees and something else. There has to be some other revenue sources coming in to sustain the city. And the largest portion of any, any tax digest of any property is your property tax. City of Atlanta, the Cab County, when you look at the revenue stream, the largest portion of revenue coming in is from the property tax. Um, hi, my name is Michelle Emanuel. I'm part of the Stonecrest Alliance, and I'm an investor, and I live in Lafonia, and I invest in Cab County. And I can tell you the reason why I employ the city is because I get tired of all summer long, um, the, the grass had grown past the sign indicating the speed limit. So not only were the deer, you were seeing dead deer everywhere, but people's mailboxes were getting knocked over. I personally called, I had to call twice in order for them to cut the grass, which is crazy to me because it was raining and obviously rain means, you know, the grass is gonna grow. Secondly, um, I don't feel like I am being heard. I'm spending a lot of money on my personal residence as well as my investment properties, and I'm just not being heard. I want to have a say in what my community looks like. Um, also, I don't know if you guys know, Best Buy is leaving Stonecrest because there is no, there's no revenue coming in. There's no one promoting our area. This is a great area. I take that back. Um, Marita, um, uh, Commissioner Johnson, she actually took people around this area, which I so appreciate because I don't think people understand um, how beautiful this community is. And it's a, it's a viable community, but unless we do something differently, it's not going to remain viable. We're not going to have um, the, the nice mall because they're going to leave because there's no one, there's no, there's no business coming in. We've had that hotel sitting there for who knows how long. And in another community, that's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. And I only recently saw a for sale sign. The sign is like this big. Like, you have to be driving by to see the sign. Why isn't the sign reflected on I-20 so that if there is someone who wants to build, guess what? You don't necessarily have to knock it down, but you can do something with it. Target is vacant. There's nothing there. I just see a bunch of 18 wheelers parked there. So my concern is that if we continue on as we've been, like what's the saying? You only if, if you always do what you always done, you always get what you got. And I want something different. Thank you. So let me Want to know technically with regards to that uh, can be found in. Yes, sir. 
I just wanted to um, piggyback off of what the uh, young lady was saying as far as, uh, and I'll be brief. I've been to a city called Wesley Chapel uh, in uh, Florida, which is just outside of Tampa. I know what a thriving, growing city looks like. I've seen it. Just have to say they're going to call it New Tampa. My point in saying that is, you mentioned that Best Buy is leaving. Well, in that city, Starbucks coffee is on the waiting list to get property in that area. That's what growth looks like. Another thing that I'm not hearing um, that I think should be said is that Stone, Stonecrest City local government will focus on this area which in my opinion, not to speak ill about the Cab County government, but every time they have the money or the resources, you see them focusing on, last week was Scottsdale, <coughs> okay, just, out, just next to Avondale States. We've heard them talk about doing something with the GM, the old, the old GM plant property. So we don't hear the Cab County, in my opinion, focusing on this area for economic development and growth. That is the advantage that I feel personally a Stonecrest City can bring to this area. Local services that focus on this area and not every place else in the county. It's concentrated in this area. That's all I wanted to say. So what we're going to do, Ms. Smith, we are going to have a couple more of these um, because what we need to do, we have to have a few more discussions so we can show numbers, put numbers up, everybody can have dialogue, input, because we want to, we're not trying to sell it. See, my job is not to sell it. My job our job is to give it to the people to, for the people to vote on and give you as much information as we can. And so by that, I'm glad to see that our senator walked into the room uh, who took Senator Ramsey's place. And so would you like to say hello? Sure. Good evening. I'm Janice Van Ness, and I'm glad to be here with you tonight. This is um, certainly a topic I've been interested in for several years. I've been to this library before for the meetings. Um, I served eight years as a commissioner in Rockdale County, so as your neighbor next door, of course it's very important for us to all have thriving communities and work together collaboratively. So this is a very important issue. I look forward to working with many of you that I don't know yet to get your feedback, suggestion, suggestions, and ideas. And I can tell you, um, you know, I went to Baxter today, Baxalto, which is a um, which is a very important economic development um, engine down in uh, the Newton area. And uh, why would that be important for you? Because we hope you get jobs and are able to work at that location because that's part of the economic development. But there are gonna be other sister companies coming in to help provide support um, and supply back Zelta. And I think it's really important for us to work collaboratively. And one day I think we're gonna find some of those companies in the bioscience field relocating and looking at some of our areas um, in the Stonecrest community. Um, I have a lot of experience in economic development, <coughs> education, and other issues that I think are important for the proper development of communities, and I look forward to working with all of you to make this a success. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, just wanna, um, I just wanted to share with you all who um, may be uh, forming the city of Stonecrest. Uh, a lot of you are starting to get engaged um, but I personally have been leading the economic development charge over the last five, six years in this area where we've created uh, the Stonecrest Business Alliance. We've created a, a CID. We have the, uh, the, the uh, Stonecrest Livable Center Initiative. So there are a lot of economic development tools that are in place, but as uh, some of you have said, unfortunately, we, we have not had the right person uh, leading this area who could actually pull all these tools that we've been putting together. And we do have new companies that are coming into uh, this area. We actually have Latonia Lighting that has come back to this area. There are several other developments. Now, having your own city, that's up to you guys to decide if you want to do that. But let's not uh, ignore uh, the good things that are in our community. So we, we have jobs that are coming into this community. We have a commissioner now who is actively engaged. So while we are having a conversation about the city of Stonecrest, and we want to hear your input, don't ignore the things that have been in place and they are working and they're coming together. So uh, there are people that have been in this area, they have been working on economic development, 
Um, just last week, the Greater Estonia Chamber of Commerce had uh, our commissioner uh, to speak about the state of East Cab, and she shared a lot about a lot of good things that are going on in this area. And uh, I'm not here to push for or against the city, but I do want you to understand that there are some good things going on, but at the end of the day, you all would be the ones making the decision of whether or not you want a city. But I would encourage you to also seek out the good things that are going on in this area, the new businesses that are coming. Yes, there are some leaving, but we have some coming as well. Thank you. Uh, we're going to start at the back and work our way this way. Sir, in the great city name, and where you live, please. Uh, my name is Robert Taylor. I live uh, in one of the things that uh, happened, my grandson was going to Bowie School. Uh, and Bowie used to be one of the best schools around. The school started losing its level because when they had the financial meltdown, a lot of professionals moved away. And so uh, we, we're talking about economic development, but from what I'm saying, choice. Our folks on the north side simply have had their choice. If you want to educate yourself 
and I encourage everyone to do that, on what a city would mean for this area, there are plenty of resources, including a website, to do that. But this is, in my opinion, tonight, is about making sure that we at least have the option to choose, which is what I think has been lacking in this area. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank y'all both for the comments, sir. And then we're gonna come up this way. My name is Swain Waters. I live uh, Panola, Salem Road. So I heard the what, the why, and I presume that the how, as this lady here indicated, the how in terms of the revenue stream. You know, what what does the city uh, payroll look like? How many employees? How many code enforcement offices do we have? All of that stuff is that detailed somewhere. Uh, on the website because the, the how is uh, extremely important, you know, because if you're busy taking care of, you know, certain other aspects of running the city, who's out there campaigning for economic development? And one point, you know, we're kind of working against, you know, depending on which side you're on, because all of the things that have transpired here have transpired under the auspices of a county government and uh, citizen participation with that county government. And as Representative Carter just said, you know, there are things that are happening positively with that participation. So what is the how that's going to be the big differentiator in terms of, you know, city employees, you know, chamber of commerce or whatever exists within the city to really draw focus on bringing economic development to the city of Stonecrest? How is that revenue going to be generated? How are those businesses going to be attracted? And also, you know, whether or not, what's the long-term effect? Does the county have the option and the right to make us assume certain responsibilities and services that they presently hold that they will ship on us at some point in time if that economic balance changes and is not no longer po uh, positive for them to, you know, carry the city of Stone get Stone Crest, and then they ship <coughs> some of those services and so forth to us that we have to carry in the city. That's very good. So. It is on the website. Give the website address again. This is what we're going to do. Does everyone have a chance? With the change of the, the proposal to not include uh, police services, when you discount that, what net benefit is it to, co to quality of life when you take away police, which is crime, with crime rates that it is, I'm trying to be politically correct here, with crime the way it is in the cab, you're not, no matter if you control zoning or not, you're not going to attract businesses until you address those problems, which you had addressed in the original proposal, but due to viability, you withdrew. So how do you plan to address those? And then to my legislators, um, the question is, is with House Bill uh, 706 that M Mr. Mosley uh, put forward, it puts into jeopardy the future of other competing plans because this is not the only plan on the table. I'm you have to tell us what that is. Oh, um, House Bill uh, 706 um, from Mr. Mosley was an annexation of part of the cab into the city of Atlanta, mm -hmm. and um, it popped up on us. Right. And uh, like I'm currently working on City of Atlanta Garden uh, 2020, a process that I feel that more groundwork, more community involvement. So there are competing uh, proposals out there, but it's a time process. But if you do certain things that take away the heart of any city being viable, then therefore we're left with whatever is uh, put before us. And that's how I feel about Stonecrest, Green Haven, and the other parts, is that last year it was sprung on us that, oh, all of these things that have been going on behind the scenes for the last couple of years that we did not know about. And I guess I have lived in the community and those type of things. So that's where I am today, is that I'm, I support um, the plan that you had for, for, um, for um, City of Stonecrest, but I think that there's some holes and some gaps and some things that need to be addressed, and that's why we're here today. But it's not the only proposal out there, and it's not the only thing, but we're, we're up against a gun. It's, oh, we gotta get this done now, vote yes or no, and then it goes away. No, there's other things that need to be addressed, and I think that we all need to be vocal on that, and the representatives need to be open to that two-way communication before certain things are put forward. <coughs> That's duly noted. Thank you for that comment, input. But it would also be good, man, if you could get with the city of Stonecrest, maybe talk to the city of Greenhaven, maybe talk to Representative Mosley, because if you said that something is lacking, it may be something that you can work collectively with one of these groups on 
um, get on one of those trains, I'm sure they may be amenable. Yeah, I agree with that. To, to and, I'm, and, I'm, and I've talked to, I've talked to Jason. Okay, yes ma'am. Hi, my name is Gina Carver. I live in Lions Head. Which, and we talked about Stonecrest Mall quite a bit. And the original documentation that I read, it appeared as if Stonecrest Mall, I'm not gonna say was the jewel in the economic development, but it was important. Um, and I haven't looked probably since maybe November or October, so forgive me if I'm overlooking some documentation that's out there. But my concern is Stonecrest Mall, as the gentleman up here alluded to, it's not what it was, and it's certainly not all that we would want it to be. And if we are kind of building this economic basis or, or um, uh, that's maybe you know, the center of where we're, we're gonna start, that's our ground zero, if you will, and the mall is, you know, we've had a lot of crime there, very violent crime. Um, the stores are leaving, someone mentioned that a lot of those anger stores and, and, and um, big brand stores are leaving. Have we factored that into uh, the approach or the um, plans we have for the city, city of Stonecrest? My concern is that we make moves based community. on Stonecrest Mall. Stonecrest, Stonecrest Mall is, is five, seven miles from my house. I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on in Stonecrest Mall, so I'm gonna be working diligently with the city of Stonecrest to set a vision for what this city is supposed to be. And, and that, that's, that's what's really important. Uh, uh, my, my city, my county council person, uh, Marita Johnson, she, she's concerned with the half county. She was, she's concerned with the fifth district. 140,000 people spread out all over this. I'm, all I'm concerned about is that little pink area right there and what goes on. And, and that, that's why I'm so much in favor. Yeah, I'll in this area, <coughs> close to three, three miles from here, probably anybody in this room. When I graduated from my third year high school, my kids gave me food. They were signs all over the gas can that say dynamic gas change. We also had the best school system in the United States in 1972. So it grieves me to see what Cab County's come to and to see what our school system's come to. Now there's, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of good things in this area. It still grieves me to see where it was and what it is today. So I'm tell a businessman in this area for 62 years. My family grew up here. I've got four generations of killings in the graveyard here in Ophelia. My uncle was a mayor down here for 25 years. So I have great interest in this area. And also, but I think the, for the last 25 years, I think the Cab County Commission has been sorry stewards of the money in this county. And uh, they thumb their nose at us down here. They put in junkyards. They put in um, uh, trash dumps. They thumb their nose at us. They've been more concerned about doing good in Golden Park, Cab County. And I think right now we need a change in this county, a strong change, because I don't see it getting any better with the commission that we have there. Thank you. Shirley Chantine talks of Stonecrest, and I see we have a lot of interest here for the new city, and I'm all for the new city, but I think we need to uh, be as important or stress the importance of uh, electing people that can lead the city. A uh, city is only as strong as your leaders, and uh, I think we need to vet the people very closely that will be applying for these positions. I have found one thing about DeKalb County, and not from uh, Atlanta, that there's a lot of politics here. And sometimes it's not always the best person who gets the job, it's the person who has the, who has the power and the connection to get the job. So the people here, whomever you decide to vote for on the ballot, make certain that you defended that person, to make certain we have the best person for the county. Because politicians make a difference. <laughs> I'm also with the Stonecrest City Alliance. Um, and my personal me, my personal thoughts behind all of this is that I'm tired of waiting in line. I'm tired of waiting in line. Just like Ms. Carter said, we have a lot of assets in this community. The Reggie Mountain Park, just in 2012, was voted one of Georgia's great places. And 
that is a that is a boom for this area. The people that it attracts from other parts of the state, other parts of the metro, and they come here and they see this community, and they they come from Cherokee, they come from Cobb, they come from North Fulton, and Forsyth. They're like, oh man, that's a great place down there. I had no idea it was like that down there. But here we are waiting at the end of the line while the county runs through all this list of projects in other areas. They're already coming to us about the GM plant, and that's in a city. But here's the county advocating for us to give up property tax dollars that would come into the cities of Stonecrest in order to help build something again on the north side at 285. As far as the schools are concerned, it's like uh, Representative Haber said, it's not about the funding, is not about the academics that are in the school. It is about community and parental involvement. Amen. How can you be involved if you gotta drive two hours across town to go to work? Amen. Economic development is the key. Amen. Livable wages, jobs that support our standard of living, that's the key. We've got a commercial center, we've got an industrial center, and we have a very viable residential area that is on recovery. But it's all going down unless we stop it here and start building it ourselves. Because there's no focus from our county government on building something right here. And just to your point, sir, um, the referendum and the city elections are two separate elections. The referendum would be first to see if we get a city. Then the state appoints committees made up of citizens of the city to help set the government up. And then months later, come the elections for mayor and city council and all those types of things. And so the community will be involved in building this city as soon as the referendum passes, God willing. And then those elections come later. That's my point to the people. is regarding that 80-20% between the franchise fee and property taxes. Right? Now, the question is, will it always be 80-20 or could it be 50-50 someday down the line? Is that 80-20 etched stone? No, I think no, it's, no, it's, no, it's not. The development come more, people have more resources to have, the revenue side, the surplus side will be on the hot, you know, on the up way. You got to get the up swing there. Bring more business, uh, and they have development into the area. Right. Yeah, and, and, and the second part of that, you said taxes. Does that, what's it, is that just property taxes or we have sales taxes? Uh, and taxes, I mean, it, it, that those things I think as, as homeowners need to be defined. <coughs> I mean, you're talking about property taxes, sales taxes, excise taxes, whatever, versus um, franchise taxes. You know, I mean, we need to know. So, we, so, so this is what we do. So next week we are having a meeting. Uh, Rep. McCarty, tell, tell them where we're meeting next the week. The meeting is uh, Wednesday, February, what day is it? Second, third, uh, six thirty to eight. Uh, the address is twenty-seven forty-five DeKalb Medical Parkway. Um, if you, if you notice there is a building across the street from the Cab Medical Hillendale. It's in between the high school, right down the corner <coughs> from the Old Oncology Building. So there, uh, a nice size auditorium there, so we have it reserved for next Wednesday. And um, I would say that you all will come prepared with the information that you need. And uh, we try to make good notes so we can uh, resolve some of the, the questions uh, that, that you have as well. <coughs> Six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Yes, sir. How you doing? How you doing? I'm also a member of the committee, and I don't live in the city. I live in the little city of Lithonia. I like to say that uh, the city of Lithonia, we have our own little politics, and we churned out some. It's pretty much the only training ground for elected officials on this side of town. You know, <laughs> when you come in the first, uh, the former mayor. Uh, <laughs> State representative for her and my, myself. I was a council person and a mayor. I want to tell you, 
I won by nine votes one time. <laughs> I lost by 20. I won again by uh, 50, uh, seven votes. I lost again by one vote. The most important thing is that you be able to control your representative. So if there's something going on, and look at me, this area is for the county to even move your commissioner out. Almost everybody in this city, in this little area, would have to vote them out. But when it's small, like the gentleman was saying, 10,000, two good subdivisions, I think it's like two, you know, I heard from two big old subdivisions <laughs> right there, they all can come together and change the dynamics of a city. Mm -hmm. So if something's not working, you can get them out and put somebody in. And that's what we've got to really concentrate on. Just don't vote somebody because they came to your church, ate some chicken dinner. And you know, again, that day you're just friends with them. But you have to actually see what they're doing for you. Now these representatives have done an excellent job. Get, I know them all. They have worked hard. They know what they're doing and take care of. <coughs> But they can't, like I said, reach all the way down. They're working, but they got a bigger pie. But with that, you're able to control your own. That's what I'm saying. So the best thing is for you to take your time and really control your area. Money, development, you know, even a little city of Bethonia, you get $10 million to build up housing and stuff. Just think of 40, you know, that big of an area. How much money, it doesn't have to come to the county, it comes straight to the so, you know, be in control. So that's all I say. Karen Bennett and I represent House District 94. 
my district is slightly uh, north of the proposed area. However, because I sit on economic development and tourism in the House, I'm particularly interested in hearing more about the economic development plan. And so I encourage the Alliance to bring information because the majority of the questions were regarding what is the plan. So if there's a five, 10 year, 15 year projection of the economic development plan, I think that that will go a long way to answer some of the questions of the people here tonight. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm for the opportunity to, for the citizens to have the opportunity to vote, yay or nay. Thank you.